Hello everyone! How are you go doing tonight? I hope it's all going well for you. Uh, it is Wednesday. Thank you for being here. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I am here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. It's a time where we can relax and craft together for about an hour and I work on projects from beginning to end so you guys can be part of the whole process along the way and we can just hang out and chit chat uh, and learn together along the way as well. So all right you guys, we are going to start a new block tonight. We're working on the Splendid Sampler 2 Quilt Along. Here's the book for it. Uh, it's a hundred blocks and uh, we're working our way through some of these pieced blocks. So I thought tonight we would work on the there's always one block. <laughs> and I think that's referring to like there's always one little mistake in there, like one little block that's flipped upside down. Uh, but I thought this one was kind of interesting because it's kind of, it's, it seems like a very similar block to the one we finished last night. Let me grab that one. So here's that, that mountains block. So it's kind of another triangle based block, but this one is a little bit different. This is, we're doing the flying uh, geese uh, sub blocks there. So uh, kind of a similar feel to the block, but totally different in execution. So I thought that would be kind of fun to do. And it's a nice, quick, easy one, I, I think. We might even be able to get real close to finishing it tonight, which would be amazing. So, all right, we are working our way through these guys. Um, I'm going to flip you around, we'll pick some fabric, and we'll get started on this tonight. So thanks again for joining me, everyone. Oh, my crazy mess. There is um, all my fabric I have not put away yet. Okay, so we'll, I'm going to grab that fabric and we will start um, picking for this. Ooh, sorry, you guys. Okay, my phone was phone switched uh, dimensions there, so hold on a sec. Okay, I think we're ready to go now. <laughs> Thanks again for uh, joining me here, everyone. Um, all right, there's always one. It's by Jennifer Keltner. Uh, it is on uh, page 13. Oh, and you know what? I said I was going to start reading these um, when we started a new block, um, and I forgot about that, so let's, let's do that now. So this is a little about... Um, the block here by the designer, Jennifer Keltner. Um, no matter how many times I put a block together or how careful I am to place them next to my machine before sewing, in the end it seems like there's always one element that's turned the wrong direction. Much, much like in real life when my ducks appear to be all lined up, there's always one more idea, final thought, or last chance. Okay, that's from Jennifer. <laughs> and there we go. Yep, there's always one <laughs> that's a little bit goofy and you just gotta kinda decide to roll with it. So, all right, you guys, let's pick some fabrics. I'm gonna grab all my kind of neutral fabrics. It is time to fold them all up and reorganize them again, because look at it, it is just an explosion. <laughs> uh, but luckily, I know that this is the grouping of them. So for sure I need some white. Um, one of the rules that I'm doing for my quilt is that the background is gonna be white whenever I can do that. There's actually two background colors here. So I think we'll do white. Ooh, this is a new big chunk of white. So we'll do white and something super close to it. So I think maybe we'll do that same the same um, light colored fabric that we did from last night. I think that would be kind of cute. Why don't we do that? These can be our two light colors for the background. And then why don't, um, let's, let's try and do some more contrasty colors. So again, my contrast is very low for, for um, this whole quilt. So um, what looks like a dark color here is gonna be a, a fairly light color for me. So I'm just thinking, okay, this is probably the darkest color I have. And maybe we do the swirls again. I don't think that's a contrasty enough. Let's see, what else can we do? Maybe we do a bright color. Oh, here, why don't we do this? This definitely contrasts these light colors. So that might be good, but we need two. So 
I think that one's awfully pretty. Let's do that one. Oh gosh, do I even have enough of this? Oh, I might just have enough of this. This is all I have left of this fabric. So let's, let's, uh, I uh, hope we have enough. Okay, and then we need another one kind of comparable to this. I do like these um, bright colors. You know, there's this one. Those are just a little too close. I want to try something different. We could do like a brown. I don't think that pops as well. I kind of like the kind of white tans and then the bright, like the oranges on here. So we could could go with this. That's kind of cute, right? I think this would read as these two and these two still. So I think this reads as the light side and, and the dark side. Like I don't think you'd ever mistake this being a light when you compare it to these. You know what? I think I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with this grouping here. So I'm gonna just put this in a big, you know, ball of fabric. <laughs> I'm definitely gonna have to go through and fold all those up again. It's getting crazy town. Okay, so these are gonna be our uh, um, the red prints. So you know, if I'm looking at it, says like eight yellow print, eight yellow check. Uh, for red print and for red dot. I mean, these are gonna be our reds. These are gonna be our, our yellows. So this is basically, if we look at it, it's the background color and then these triangles, these red kind of triangles are gonna be these. So it's gonna be a little confusing because these kind of match our background color there, but I think we'll figure it out. Okay, so we need eight yellow. Okay, we that's these two. We need eight of these um, two inches by two inches and then we need well, eight of each, so uh, 16 total. So eight of these two inch squares and then eight of these two inch squares. So that means we can cut on top of each other. Although this piece, we don't, I think we're gonna have to cut them separately just because this is such a wonky piece at this point that I'm not sure it's gonna work to layer um, layer it. And then we need four, four pieces out of each of these that are two inches by three and a half inches. And again, we might have to cut them separately just because um, we're not working with much fabric anymore. And this is probably gonna be the name of the game from here on out because we are, you know, I picked my fabric for the quilt way at the beginning and uh, we're just kind of working our way through all the fabric. So, uh, so we just cut all these little crazy pieces out of it and, um, you know, we don't have like perfect bolt from the bolt fabric that we can just cut, you know, strips out of. So we got to kind of figure it out a little bit. So I'm going to just start here. So normally I would layer my fabrics. I would layer this and the white together, cut them all together. Um, it would make cutting go super duper fast. But yeah, because we got to, you know, we got to work with a, the funny little pieces of fabric that we have left. And it's going to be a little different here. Okay. So let's try and get eight two inch uh, squares out of here. So that would be 16 inches worth. And I have, I, I do not think we're even close to 16 inches for the length of this. No, we're at 12. So what about here? Oh, maybe we can go this way. I wonder what this is right here. So that's 10 inches. I could cut, That'll give us five. I could cut some from here and then I could probably get, is this six inches? No, not quite yet. That's kind of a bummer. Let's see, what if we go, what can we get here? So that's 12, so that's six. Oh, whatever way you do it, it's just going to end up being not great with this fabric. So you know what? I think I'm going to just cut two strips here and see where it ends up. So I'm going to just start out by um, giving myself a nice edge. Um, what, will run, what will happen if I run out of fabric? Well, I'm hoping that I don't run out of fabric. I mean, you know, I do have a lot of some of the other fabric, um, a lot of the other 
designs. It's just some of these other ones that I actually didn't start out with a whole lot. Um, if I run out, I mean, I'm sure I can find some more in this house somewhere. <laughs> uh, so I will just, um, I'll just have to look around and then add, add more, uh, cream elements. So I, I will just, um, I will scrounge this house and see what else I have for these kind of pale colored fabrics. And I'm sure I'll find something. I, I, I'm not terribly worried about that. And I have, there were, you know, I spent some time picking these fabrics at the beginning. So um, there were fabrics that didn't make the cut. And uh, the ones that didn't make the cut, um, there were a few that were probably pretty close to being okay, but then I just decided against them. So I'm thinking those we could easily just add into the mix and, and we'd be totally fine. So I'm not too worried. I'm going to try and make do with what I have here. So again, this is a pretty putsy way of of cutting. I'm cutting like every little piece separately versus, you know, cutting them in a, you know, stacking them together and cutting a whole pile, pile together. But again, it's just because I got just this slice of fabric that's all over the place. So I don't know. We're doing it this low way tonight. So when was the last time you bought fabric for personal use? I did get fabric for that um, the, um, that hourglass block quilt that we made a while back. Uh, there's this store in town <clears throat> called SR Harris and it's almost like an overstock store for fabrics and it's a huge warehouse. Um, and, uh, <laughs> I couldn't resist getting some fabric from there. So I did get some, oh, I actually got some batiks there that are hiding in my house somewhere. I haven't, I haven't come up with a good project for those batiks yet. Ugh, they're just so pretty though. And then I did get some, some fabric that had a little bit of metallic in, some just fat quarters. And that's what I used to make, um, that hourglass quilt. So that is, that's the last time I bought fabric, but I have so much fabric that you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm totally in the mindset now of like, use up all the things, you know, so you see me, I'm, I'm just like, I'm cutting up clothes that I've saved and stuff at this point. So I don't know. We'll see. Every once in a while I get pretty tempted, but I, I straight have to like talk myself down, like before going into the store of like, okay, I got stuff at home. I probably don't need much. But, you know, if I'm going to a cute store, I usually end up buying something because, you know, you want to support the store, too. All right, this was one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and this wasn't going to be enough for three. I don't think I needed it six inches. And, yeah, we're, we're not at six inches there. So what about, what about over here? Yeah, this is fine over here. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna get two inches out of there. So I don't know. Let's trim this off here and we'll get the rest, the other two cut from here. Oh gosh, you guys. Oh, you're using batiks. Oh yeah, that's right, Lucy. Oh gosh, and it's looking so good. Um, I love love the look of batiks and I think they're just getting cooler and cooler and uh, they're on the edge of me needing to do something with them real soon. Uh, so I don't know, we might be pulling out some batiks <laughs> just cause I can't, I can't handle it anymore. I might need to just use them for something. I think we're squared up here. I'm gonna just cut my, I think I need three more out of this. But yeah, they're so pretty. All right, three. 
Yeah, so I can feel it. I'm, I can feel on the verge of having to do something with batiks. Oh, but that's what I was going to say. The, the SR Harris, they have aisles and aisles and aisles of batiks. Like they almost, for kind of like that quilting weight fabric almost, they almost specialize in in these batiks and ugh, they're all just so pretty. Um, I just go to kind of the scrap bin area there and uh, um, if I can find some cute batiks there, unless I'm going in there with like a real project where I'm actually picking. Oh, that's been a long time since I've done that, since I've gone to a store with a project in, in hand and had to lay out a ton of fabric to pick, to pick, um, fabric for a project. It has been a long time since I've gone that direction. I usually just kind of see what I have or buy cute stuff at a store and then, you know, save it for, and then it just pops up as something that I want to use later. But I haven't gone with a project and bought fabric in a long time. That would be really fun to do again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. That guy's done. Again, took a little bit longer than I'd like because I would have liked to just, you know, stack it all with with this and be done quick. Um, all right, we need, what was it again? Eight. So that's uh, 16 inches worth. Okay, yeah, this is a fat quarter. So this is about 18 inches. I'm just gonna um, fold this in half. Let's press this little edge here. Then I'm gonna just fold it in half and then um, we'll cut our, our eight two inch squares out of this pretty quickly, I think. Let's give it a quick press. There we go, that's good enough. Oh, you did a top recently with Batiks and the quilt shop called this afternoon. Oh, they haven't finished quilted. Ooh, that's exciting, Lucy. You'll have to share it in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group when you when you pick it up. That's, that's exciting stuffs. A quilted quilt. All right, so I'm gonna trim this edge just because it's got the selvage on there yet. All right, and then I wanna cut my two inch um, piece out of here. I think I wanna use the two ruler method. I'm just gonna undig my ruler from, from my table here. Okay, and I'm gonna do the two ruler method of cutting but just because I have so much stuff over here that I don't wanna turn my fabric um, and then lose my nice folded edge there. So I'm just gonna put another ruler here, put it on the two inches. Okay, butt it up against there, and then we can move that first ruler out of the way and we got our two inches. All right, great. We are done with this white fabric. I will eventually fold that all up. All right, and then we need our um, eight out of here. So I'm just gonna fold it again. We're gonna trim off this fold and these little edges. Actually, you know what, we can, eh. I was thinking we could actually fold it again but I'm not gonna risk risk that. Let's just, then I'm going cutting through eight layers. Let's just cut through four layers. That's plenty of fabric to cut through. All right, so this time I'm not gonna do the two ruler method because I can just rotate my whole mat here and I think that'll be the easiest way of doing it. All right, two inches. Might off there, it feels, feels weird. Okay. All right, this is our first four. All right. And that is eight. 
All right, there we go. That is, uh, so all of our light colored ones are done. Oh, that's a kind of a weird way to stack them. Let's just put them on top of each other. There we go. All right, lights are done. And, and looking at this now, those do feel the same, which is good. They both feel very, very light. Like if you squint, they almost look like the same color. And that's what I wanted to do versus just doing the whole thing white. I wanted to do the two colors like that were in the instructions. And I think this, this did the job there. All right. Next up, what do we got here? Okay, so these again are two really oddball sizes of fabrics. Um, okay, so what do we need? We need three and a half by two inches and, and four of them. So I wonder if we did three and a half here. Four of them would be eight inches. Do we have eight inches here? Okay, we totally do. So I can get, I can cut a three and a half inch strip and then cross cut them. We'll do that and let's see if we can layer so we can speed things along. Okay, is this eight inches? Oh, it must be. Okay, perfect. So we can do this at the same time, which would be great. So I'm gonna press both these edges and then we'll slice it up. This is what I would have liked to do with the light colors, just layer them. Um, but again, we were dealing with some odd shaped fabrics, but it's gonna work what's gonna work this time around. So lots will be good. Anything that to speed up the cutting process, I am down with. I think that's kind of why I, I feel like I've been uh, avoiding the pieced blocks from this project a little bit. And uh, I know it's because of the cutting. Like I just, I don't know. I haven't found the joy in cutting quite yet. Uh, so I gotta work on that, I suppose. All right, I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna just cut this nice edge and then uh, three and a half inches. All right, there we go. Don, you have 50 blocks completed. That's amazing. That is amazing, amazing. I should count mine again, but I know I'm nowhere near uh, 50 blocks. All right, so what did I say? Three and a half inches. One, two, three and a half. There's something about the markings on this ruler that trip me up always. All right, three and a half. Let's butt that up against it. Ugh, I moved. Let's try that again. Hey, when that happens, I, my ruler slipped a little bit before I started there. Okay, one, two, three and a half. This is that ruler that I feel like I need to put more grippies on. Keep it from moving. All right, done with these bits. Now we just need these. All right, so I'm going to, oh, might as well just rotate the whole thing. I'm gonna trim this edge. And then I'll rotate the whole thing again and we will get our, what do we need? We need four two inch bits out of all of them. Okay, four two inches. All right. One. Two, I always get so nervous with cutting as well. All right. Oh, this is like, oop, did I even, oh, gosh, I don't even think I, I thought I didn't even cut to the end there, but we're okay. Two inches. All right, whew, cutting is done. And uh, I think this, um, this uh, sewing is gonna go super duper slick here. So let's, 
let's see, let's, um, I'm going to kind of place these how they are in the, uh, the picture. So they're just kind of crisscrossed. So like that. And then same thing with, or it looks like these, they all match the same. So what we should do is just like, let's just put these, this pile together and it will go with, let's just have it go with that block. And then this pile will go together with this block. And um, we'll sew those together. So what we're gonna do now is make uh, flying geese units. So how we do that, is we take one of our rectangle blocks and then we take one of um, our squares. Oh, thanks for coming, D. And we're gonna line it up just on the edge here and we are gonna sew, starting from the center here, the, this long edge, we're gonna sew just right on the diagonal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna even give this a little fold and you could draw a diagonal line on here, but I kind of just like folding it. And we're going to sew um, directly on that fold. I might even go a hair to the outside. Um, so this is going to be this is going to be an edge that we get rid of. Um, what we want to end up with is this folded up like this. So we're going to start by sewing just the one side on all of these. And then we're going to come back. We're going to press that into place. And then we're going to trim off this excess here and then we'll go back and do the second side. So the second side will go like this. Again, we'll sew on the diagonal starting from the middle, but we're going this direction now and it will be ultimately folded up like that. So we'll end up with a, um, all of these rectangles will end up looking like this. So that is the plan. So um, these fabrics go together and these fabrics go together. So I'm going to just start out by sewing the one side on um, the side of the like right side of every single one of these pieces. But I'm going to remember that the white pieces go with um, this kind of floral and these cream pieces go with this kind of blue floral here. So all right, let's chain piece this guy. This should go pretty quick. Uh, we are, um, we do have to press them all and trim them. So that will take a little bit of time. Uh, but all in all, this should be a pretty quick block, I'm thinking. Okay, again, let's start out with this. I already have that diagonal. So I'm going to just line up all my edges. I'm going to take off my shoe. I like sewing with just my foot. <laughs> I can feel it. I just can feel the pedal a little bit more. So the reason I'm sewing from this long edge, from like in to the out, versus like this is because sewing starting with just this kind of 90 degree corner my machine just wants to eat that so like if this is the hole in my machine it just wants to push it down into the machine like that whereas if i'm on a, this edge like a, this long edge it can't do that as much because all of this is on top um, so that's why it's easier to sew from this long edge the inside out versus, you know, just that point to the inside. So that's, I'm going to, I'm going to do that on every single one of these. So I'm sewing directly on that line, actually just a hair to, to the outside edge here. All right, that guy's done. Let's move on, grab the next piece. All right, let's draw that diagonal. In this case, I'm gonna, you know, you can draw the diagonal too. So if you want, if you don't like the folding method, just grab a pencil or a water soluble marker or something, and then just take a ruler. Just draw a diagonal just lightly on there. There we go. And that is what, there you can see my little diagonal. That is what we'll sew on. You could actually mark all of these pieces all at once. You know, add that extra step, but it'll make this part just quick and easy. All right, two. 
I just kind of like skipping that other step. So I just, I just kind of, I like folding them. And I'm just pressing down. I'm not, I'm not stretching because uh, it's on the bias. It's on the, the um, stretchy part of the fabric is the diagonal. So I don't want to like, when I fold it, I don't want to pull on it at all. All right, we have one more for that side. Oh, Gina, you had the same problem with your Kenmore from the 70s. Oh, that's interesting. So yeah, this is, this is, um, my Kenmore here is from the 70s. Gosh, I think 74, but now I can't, I can't remember if that's right or not. I'll have to look that, look it up again, but I think it's a 74 Kenmore. Yeah, and I, I think other people have had that problem before too. I know we struggled with that a lot, like the machine eating our corners in the first splendid sampler. And uh, I tried a bunch of different things, but yeah, um, starting from the center sure did help a lot. All right, that's the first side. Let's go ahead and do our other fabric right away. Oh, you were five when my machine was made. That's awesome. Yeah, this is my, um, I acquired this one. Oop, fold it this way. Uh, this is my mom's college um, sewing machine. And I snagged it after uh, after she got a, a new sewing machine. like in like 2011 or so, I think. Or 2000, um, 2000, I don't know, maybe one, I think actually is 2001. That sounds kind of right. I think that's when my mom started to get into quilting. I don't remember her sewing a lot when we were little, but um, she got into quilting later and, and she sews a ton now. She's working on this project too, the Splendid Sampler too. So um, I'm gonna have to check out her progress again. She's doing, oh, she just popped in here. <laughs> She's doing, her quilt is a completely it's a white and, and black quilt. And then there's like tiny little specks of, of blue every once in a while, just cause there's a little bit of blue in some of that fabric. But for the most part, it's a black and white quilt. Which I don't think she's done before. So we're both trying new color <laughs> theories that are that we're not used to um, for, for our quilts. Like I'm doing just this kind of pale quilt. Oh, hi from the Bahamas. So my mom's on vacation right now. Um, she says hi from the Bahamas. <laughs> That's nice. I hope you're nice and toasty. <laughs> it snowed here the other day again. Oh, but God, today it was like 50s and you'd think it was the middle of summer. It was just beautiful and just such a nice change, but it is not Bahama weather, that's for sure. All right, we're through our first set of rectangles. Let me just grab a liter. Okay, this is the second to last liter before I run out of, oop, before I run out of liter fabric. So I'm gonna have to this weekend, maybe I'll sit around and I'll chop up some more fabric for leaders. Okay, let's press these all. Oh, your your Kenmore has a broken bobbin door. Yeah, this one the um the presser foot or the um the feed dogs don't lower. Ugh, I can't, and you know, I don't know why. I'm still, I still want to bring that into the shop and get it fixed. I can't, I've tried to figure that out by myself, why the feed dogs don't lower. It just seems like 
I don't know, like a nubbin's not being pushed out of the way enough, or I don't know, it's locked up or something. I, I can't figure it out. So that, that I may have to bring into, to the sewing machine doctor and see what, see what they can do. Maybe it just needs to be like mega greased or something. I'm not sure. All right, let's press these. So some people, um, so this is what we're gonna end up with. Um, you know, we have our seam here. We're gonna end up pressing this upward and that's gonna be the first half of our triangle, right? So some people like trimming off all this excess because ultimately we're gonna trim this to like a, a quarter inch seam allowance, right? Some people like doing that first, but this was a tip from my mom um, and I've been doing it since I think it's a great tip. She doesn't cut these off until after she presses it because with this edge still here, you can see, you know, the rectangle shape. So when you press, you can use it as a guide to get this edge that we are going to fold up there to match up with that rectangle. And then, then our final piece will be more of that true rectangle because we, we have these edges as a guide. So I'm gonna press them all with, with this, um, with the excess on. I'm not gonna cut it off quite yet. Okay, so let's, um, I'm just gonna flip these all in the right direction and let's give those a press. So I'm gonna just uh, set the seam a little bit. And now this is where I'm gonna flip, flip that triangle and I'm gonna press that, but I'm also gonna kinda get it in line with our edges here. with the edge of the rectangle. So there we go. So that is our first one. The next step, we will we'll just fold this back and trim this off. But for now, um, we're just pressing all those. So let's go through it. So we got how many of these? Eight, right? Yeah. So eight of these to do. So again, I'm lining it up with these outer edges and just giving it a press. So sometimes you don't sew exactly on that diagonal by um, by lining it up with these outer rectangle edges. That's going to make up for any mistakes we did in our diagonal. Like sometimes I do the diagonal like a little too far away or a little um, too far inward and we can pull and tug a little bit to get it to line up with our, ooh, hot, hot, hot with our edges. Twenty-five done. Ooh, Mary, you and me are about at the same pace here. Yeah, I'm definitely not caught up with, not caught up with the crowd, that's for sure. This weekend I'll have to, I'll have to count them all again. I, I don't think I've been keeping track very well of, of the ones I got done on my on my sheet and the ones that have been released. So I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to mark them all on my my list that has all the blocks. Oh, these are sweet together. These two fabrics, I like it. Oh look, I didn't notice this. This has like a, this little grid in the background, and so does this one. <laughs> Maybe that's what drew me to have those two together. All right, we got one more to do, and then we'll trim them all up, and we can sew that second, that second bit on. Okay, there we are. Let's trim. So I am gonna do this just with a scissors. I know that freaks some people out. So. I'll show you what to do. So you can you can either take a ruler. Let's see. Let's grab grab this ruler here. So we need to. What we're trying to do here is we need to trim off all this excess, right? So I'm going to actually open this up again, and we have our seam. I'm going to put my ruler on that seam, and then just 
a quarter inch. So a quarter inch in, I'm gonna put on that seam or the, or the diagonal basically, and then we'll trim the edge off. There we go. So this is excess. We're not gonna need those. And there we are. And now I can fold it back like that. So you can do it that way. That's, um, you know, if you want it super duper perfect, that's a way to do it. I'm going to do it uh, just with my scissors, which disappeared. Here we go. Magic scissors. Remember to fold it back. You don't want to accidentally cut off your triangle. So let's fold back that triangle. And I'm going to just take a scissors and estimate estimate about a quarter inch away. I just think that's faster and I, I just really like using the scissors. <laughs> this is that Kai scissors. Um, they were selling a pair of these on Mastrop. I think that that's over with. Um, I This is the 7230. This is the eight inch one. I think they were selling the 10 inch one plus a cool other little scissors um, on Mastrop last week. The professional series, that's what this one is. And ugh, just makes me happy using it. So I'm gonna cut with the scissors, not the rotary cutter. Had enough of the rotary cutter today. I'm gonna separate these into piles now. Okay. So now, same deal. We just have to sew the other side on. So again, these white ones go with these and these guys go with this, but so the same thing, we're going to fold it to add that crease. And then ultimately when we're done, we'll press it up this direction. So we'll, we'll sew from the, again, from the center edge out. And then once we're done folding it up and pressing it, we'll have our flying geese unit. So this is what a flying geese unit, whenever you hear that um, spouted around flying geese, uh, this is what they mean. They mean a rectangle with the two triangles on the corner like that. So that's the flying geese unit. All right, let's do it. Oh, you guys, some of you guys ordered them. Oh, and you ordered uh, scissors tags that say fabric only. Smart, smart. Yeah, I would be way sad if I saw someone using these for anything else. And man, I kind of feel like you could probably perform surgery with these scissors. They're pretty intense. They are sharp buggers. So, you know, don't get your fingers in the way. <laughs> All right. All right, so I'm gonna fold, get this folded edge again. Oh, your family knows, oh, that your pizza cutter is off limits, that your, your rotary cutter, that's pretty funny. Oh God, yeah, that will cut off a finger. Maybe that's why I'm scared of it. All right, so again, diagonal and from the center. That's eating it. Let's give it a little tug. There we go. Ah, machine just wants to keep eating those triangles. Ah, jerk butt. All right. Even from sewing from the center. Oh, you have a spring-loaded uh, scissors. Those are nice. So have you guys heard of those before? Um, a spring-loaded scissors. So do I have one near me? Oh no, I don't. I have an, one in um, another room, but what it is, is there's a spring. I don't know quite how it works. There's like a spring in here somewhere, not this scissors, but a different one. So it always pops open. So you press down to cut and it'll, it'll automatically pop open. And uh, those are really, really nice if you are doing a ton of cutting. Um, because it, it relieves the pressure of having to open the scissors with your hand like this motion all the time. It just pops right open. And uh, yeah, that is, they, they totally relieve. Like if you're cutting, like, let's say a bajillion applique shapes or 
maybe applique is not the best, but like, let's say you're making a ton of stuff out of felt and you got to cut like 300 circles or something out of felt, uh, you, you know, a scissors that's spring loaded would not be a bad thing for that. Okay, I don't know if you saw that, you guys, but it was trying to get stuck in my machine again, and all I did was pull, I pulled on the piece that was behind it, and that kind of guided it through the machine a little bit more. We just changed the needle, so I don't think that's the problem. I think it's just, it likes eating these corner bits, these little triangles, I don't know. Yeah, right here it's kind of getting stuck again, so I'm just going to pull on the back piece and that got it moving along. All right, let's do these fillers. Oops, let's press with the right side down. You know, we got a little longer. I might just finish. I think we're gonna make this a two day project, you guys. I could stay up for a while and finish this, but I think there's enough left that we could, we could finish this and maybe start another block all tomorrow. So I think that's what we'll do. And we'll take a look. So tomorrow is Thursday, so it's new block Thursday. So we will have four new blocks to peruse. So we'll take a look at those. And then we'll finish up this block. We're gonna have to sew all these together into rows and then sew those rows together yet. And I think that's just enough that it kind of puts us over our time quite a bit today. So it's a two, it's a two day project. It's really not. I mean, this will take maybe 15 minutes tomorrow, if that. Eh, yeah, maybe about 15 minutes, if I had to guess. So we'll see what the new blocks are, and I think we'll, we could at least maybe cut fabric for another block. And then Friday is Finish It Friday, and we are going to check out that block lock and that slotted trimmer. We're gonna test out those products on, on a pile of half square triangles. Close the gap between the pieces so the machine doesn't eat them. Oh, yeah, I could do that. Maybe I'll, so, well, there's not much of a gap. Like, I'm just starting it right away. I suppose by lifting it up like this, that's closing the gap a little bit more. Let's try that. Oh yeah, that worked. All right, I'm gonna try that um, for the future of these. Yeah, I just had to lift up, um, lift it up to get started. Okay, this is the last light color um, square. Oh, my last light colored leader. That means I'm gonna have to use leaders that don't end up being anything um, tomorrow. Well, the other side of this one, I suppose. But sad, out of leaders. I can't believe we used up all of those, um, all of those squares that we cut already. It's kind of crazy. All right, so same deal. I'm gonna press these um, with before I cut off the edge, because then we can use that the rectangle edge as our guide again. So same. Same as um, earlier. So let's get to the mat here. Scooch all our stuff away again. All right, here we go. So again, here's our here's our diagonal. We're gonna use this edge as our guide, and that will be our pretty half square triangle, or not half square triangle, our flying goose, flying geese unit. Then we'll trim them up and we'll have all our pieces, our smaller pieces ready to go for tomorrow.
So I'm lining up to the edges of the that rectangle again. Oh, Rita, that sounds super relaxing. I'm hoping to do some embroidery this weekend. If I do, I'm, I'm actually working on some new designs uh, that I'm hoping to have, that, that I'm hoping we can produce here. So um, I'm gonna be stitching up little samples of those um, so we can use them for photography on the covers of the, of the kits. So let's, we'll see how that goes. Might have some sneak peeks. And um, Shauna, maybe the bat, I actually have not drawn the bat yet. I do want to, um, by the end of the weekend, I do want to have that bat drawn. Um, I'm, ex I'm kind of excited about that little bat. That like sketch that was barely anything. Um, but yeah, that... That one I haven't drawn yet, but I, I have several other that I do have drawn that I want to stitch, but I do want to get that bat done as well. So I will, I'll, uh, I'm hoping I get to embroidering those this weekend. And if, if that's the case, I'll make sure to take a few pics to share with you guys along the way. All right, this is the second to last one. I like these ones. These are cute, this one with these this cream and this orangey fabric. All right, last one. All right. Dun, dun, dun. All right, let's trim these up. And then let's lay it out. Let's see what it's gonna look like here. We'll lay it out on, on my mat here. Scooch this guy out of the way again. Okay. So let's just get take care of these triangles first. So, or these edges. I'm gonna just fold that back again and trim my trim that quarter inch seam allowance. There we go. So there's that's what the back will look like. There we go. I'm just gonna stack them all up. I just think the scissors is just faster than having to line up a ruler and everything. Just remember to fold that flap back. You don't want to accidentally cut. And I, you know what, I've done this before where I've accidentally forgot to cut these and I've sewn all of the layers into the quilt and you know, that's fine too. It's, you just got two extra layers in there. So if you forget to trim. It's totally not the end of the world. Oh, the scissors just makes a good cutting sound too. All right, last one. Trim to size before sewing together. That's probably a good idea. Um, let's see. Let's see what it has to say. Um, well, they should end up being, uh, we shouldn't actually have to trim them because uh, we used our rectangle as our guide. So this, this should still be three and a half inches by two inches. And we used our rectangle edges as a guide when we folded these back. So they should be pretty spot on, I'm, I'm hoping. Yeah, I'm a little actually shy of the two inches here, but um, basically we're two by three and a half. So I don't think, I'm not gonna worry about trimming them down at all. Um, just cause we did use our rectangle as our guide. So, all right, let's, let's lay these out. See what it looks like. Oh, you did that yesterday. You didn't need, you didn't need to trim Fran. I know, all those little triangles. You have a stack of all those little triangles. I know, I was just thinking about all the, the little triangles that we trimmed off of it. You know, I do know that some people sew them together right away because then they get a little they get a little, little half-square triangle unit, like an itty-bitty-bitty bitty one. So I'm kind of tempted to do that. Uh, you know, we, we ran out of leaders today, so maybe tomorrow we'll use those as our leaders. 
All right, it is looking awfully sweet. I am really happy with this so far. I, I really like these color choices. I think this is gonna be just darling once it's sewn up. So next we're gonna, um, oh, so this is surprising. So I'm just looking at the, at the instructions again. In my head, we are gonna sew each of these rows together and then, then together like that, but we're not. We're gonna sew this column together and then we're gonna sew this column together and then we'll sew those two um, columns. So that's what we'll be up to tomorrow. So some things that we'll have to pay attention to tomorrow are these points. We don't wanna get those points lost when we sew. And when we sew the two rows together, we're gonna want these, these folds, these di diagonals to meet too, so we get nice, nice points. Oh yeah, and one goes upside down, you're right. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> you are right. Good catch, you guys. I would have totally sewn those together. Okay. <laughs> there. You got to force the mistake, I suppose, uh, sometimes. But there we go. That's sweet. I think that's really darling. All right. <laughs> now we got it right. All right. I'm going to flip you guys around, and we will call it a night. We are prepped for tomorrow. This is going to go really, really well. <laughs> got a got ahead of myself there. I forgot to flip that last one, which is kind of funny. Uh, it's just gonna be so sweet this block. But I love these, you know, the half square triangles and the flying geese units like this. I just think there's something fun about flipping that square and it turning into a just a pretty triangle. So I, I'm really liking this block. Um, I think we're gonna have uh, fun sewing this together, and uh, you know, it just gets me excited for Friday when we do. Um, when we have finished it Friday when we're gonna we're going to trim up all of our leaders and make a whole pile of, of half square triangles and start sewing them together. We'll see what we get on Friday there. So uh, thanks again you guys. Tomorrow we'll check out the new blocks and finish this guy up. Uh, and I'm gonna get this up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies if you want to check it out there. I'm gonna upload it right now and uh, um, I'll be back here on the Penguin and Fish Facebook uh, tomorrow at 8.30 p.m. Central. So see you later. Have a great evening.